Let's discuss the possibilities of an Indian subcontinent animal pack. The game has possessed an Indian theme since the beginning of the game and started off with a few Indian animals. And the subcontinent has a diverse range of animals to still offer the game. And I think this pack would really be a good opportunity to cover a few more. So, for a little bit of a rundown, the Indian subcontinent is a diverse range of habitats contained within the countries of India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh and the Maldives. Some of these habitats can include the grasslands of northern India, where among the herds of deer, buffalo and antelope, Asian elephants roam and one-horned rhinos take refuge in fields of tall elephant grass. Up to the peaks of the Himalayas where red pandas dwell in the branches, herds of wild goat roam the slopes and where snow leopards prowl to hunt them. Down to the bottom of Bangladesh where the largest mangrove forest, the Sundarbans, stretches as far as the eye can see. Many of the animals here include fi elusive fishing cats that live up to their name and one of the only populations of Bengal tigers to live in such habitats. Plantsu currently has a wide range of Indian animals. Indian elephants, peafowl, rhino and gharial, as well as Bengal tigers appeared in the base game. With subsequent DLCs coming afterwards, introducing animals like the wild water buffalo, striped hyena, Asian small clawed otters, clouded leopards, dolls and most recently the sloth bear. But there are still many more that can be added to the game. So let's begin. Our flagship is the black buck, a sleek species of Asian with males adorning elegant corkscrew horns and black and white coats, while the females remain a dull brown. These fleet-footed animals would make great additions to safari parks and open range zoo builds, where they would be housed alongside many of the region's herbivores. Gower are the largest of Asia's bovines and the largest on earth. Males can weigh over a ton, outclassing even the current plains bison, Wisent, wild water buffalo, and the Cape buffalo in mass. Gower can be distinguished from the neighbouring water buffalo by their shorter horns, as well as their hairy heads, their taller, stockier build, and a distinguished shoulder hump that is very present on males. The lion-tailed macaque's name comes, as over, comes over as not being too clear as to what part of the animal it necessarily refers to, depending on how you say it. One interpretation is that the macaque has a lion's tail, but lions have a tasseled tail, whereas these monkeys do not. So perhaps it isn't the lion-tailed macaque, instead the lion-tailed macaque, which means they look like a lion with their distinguished mane and are one of the few macaques that possess a long tail. This endangered species would add some flair to the primate roster of Asia. An alternative primate is the Hanuman langur, or the Northern Plains Grey langur as they are also known, and they are one of the most recognisable of Asia's monkeys, being a rather common sight in both urban landscapes and also on Indian safaris. They act as lookouts in the forest, alerting any animals below them to an approaching predator, these can include buffalo or deer, and they will alert them with a loud barking sound. Fishing cats are one of my favourite small cats, and I feel are a bit underappreciated. And they would be a great addition to the game, adding a smaller cat that enjoys life in the water. Their webbed feet allows them to adopt their semi-aquatic lifestyle to hunt fish underwater. This endangered species should certainly receive a little bit more attention. Himalayan manales are colourful pheasants from the forests of the Himalayan slopes. The male's plumage carries an almost metallic shine, and is comprised of a dazzling selection of greens, blues and violets, with hints of orange and gold as well. Manals and other pheasants have a display that very much resembles that of the Indian peafowl. Not as grand, but still impressive. Markor are large wild goats, with the males being distinguished by their long beards and long corkscrew horns that have often been attributed to its stories in local folklore as a snake eater. Though they may not prey on snakes, these herbivores are a prime target for many predators in the mountains, such as that of snow leopards, golden eagles and Himalayan grey wolves. Sri Lankan leopards are the island of Sri Lanka's top predators, being slightly larger than those found on mainland India, and have been known to use this size to their advantage, taking on much larger prey than those on mainland, such as full-grown sambar deer stags and juvenile water buffalo that would generally pose a significant threat to an Indian leopard. This subspecies is widespread in captivity and has slowly grown a captive prevalence over many other leopard subspecies. This animal would add a tropical leopard into the game and a suitable display animal for Asian areas. 
and it would certainly be a beautiful animal to be brought to life in the game. An alternative big cat would be that of the endangered Asiatic lion, the only lions that exist out of Africa. This subspecies is differentiated by its African counterparts by having sometimes darker but shorter manes. They also possess a fold of skin that hangs from their belly that isn't present on African lions. This animal would be a great way for the Plant Zoo team to create a lion that is far more realistic in its appearance compared to the stylized West African lion that we have at present. There is, however, a far more popular non felid predator that can be considered here due to their widespread distribution. And I am, of course, talking about the toughest animal in the world, the honey badger. This muscle has the confidence and aggression to stand up to African predators, and does the same with those found in India as well. As I stated in a previous video, a primary reason I would like to see this animal added is due to their intelligence and resourcefulness that allows them to escape from almost any habitat that a zoo could build for them making them somewhat of a challenge to house, which is something I would love to see recreated in Plant Zoo. I think that would be just a fun nuisance. Nilgai are Asia's largest antelope and would be a pleasant addition due to their tall stature that would give them a distinct silhouette in contrast to Asia's other herbivores. Our first of several deer selections that can be considered for such a pack is the Samba deer one of the largest deer species in Asia and a favourite prey item of the Bengal tiger. Found across southern Asia in a variety of habitats, including those of the Himalayas, which is sometimes considered a reason as to how Bengal tigers can sustain themselves at those elevations too. While their populations have been declining in Asia, introduced populations to countries like Australia and New Zealand have seen this species flourish. The cheetah, spotted or axis deer is one of the most common of the deer species on the Indian subcontinent, being found in many different habitats across the region. These deer exhibit a similar appearance to that of the European fallow deer. This species is one of the favourite prey items, much like the samba, of large predators in India, such as the big cats, the canines and the crocodiles. Montjac or barking deer are a striking little deer species found in many of southern and southeast Asia's forests. Like other muntjac species, the Indian muntjac males develop short, sharp tusks which they use as an offensive weapon against predators or other muntjac. A final deer consideration could be that of the hog deer, a short and stout species that gets its name not from pig-like snout, but holding their heads low while running to duck under obstacles much like a wild pig would, rather than leaping like most deer. Our exhibit consideration has to be the King Cobra, the most famous snake in perhaps all of Asia. However, they are not true cobras. They may have cobra in the name, but they are in fact in their own group of elapids, with many different subspecies, potentially even species, found across Asia. And this species is by far one of the most requested exhibit animals, as we do not have a cobra of any kind. Even though they're not true, King Cobra is an iconic animal that the game should not pass up. And it also already exists in the Indian themed scenery, so it only makes sense to eventually include it. Moving on from new animals, let's discuss some potential update features regarding the animals. So, the current red panda is based off the Chinese red panda, however, the Indian subcontinent possesses its own, that of the Himalayan red panda, dif differentiated from its Chinese counterpart by a much paler face, which I would love to see recreated. And on the topic of red pandas, we could su suggest a potential red panda remaster, as I will be completely honest, the red panda in the game, I often don't use, just because it really doesn't, it doesn't scream red panda to me. I, I've met red pandas, and I've seen many of them, and they really are not as stout, short, and can I say fat <laughs> as well? Like they do, they don't look like they do in Planet Zoo, and I think giving them a more elegant build, a much longer body as well, and making some changes to the face, I think would go a long way in bringing the true spirit of the red panda to life. And I'm a sucker for good red pandas. I would love to see Planet Zoo make a proper red panda, as it may look like a red panda and is accepted by many, as I found out in a poll. But personally, I would like to see it get reworked. 
Another animal that could potentially see a rework is the Indian elephant. Not, not necessarily all in the models, however, there could be some different aspects of the model change, like adding a bit more hair to the animal, as Indian elephants and many other Asian elephants possess a bit more hair than that of the African elephants. Also giving them a mu much more variation in their coloration and mottling that is present on their trunks. And yeah, I, I would like to see the Indian elephant done justice, as in real life they are magnificent animals, and I think they should be done due credit. This is perhaps the animal here that requires the least amount of change. However, I would like to see the Indian rhino get a bit of a detail uplift, as looking at current animals in the game, I think the Indian rhino could have a lot more um, depth and definition put into the hard plates of armor. That hard, Well, it's not plates necessarily, it's folds of skin, but it looks like a suit of armor. And potentially another feature that could be added is variation in the horns, as not every rhino has the same horn. And I would love to see that recreated in Planet Zoo for not just the Indian rhino, but potentially for the black and white rhino as well. Indian peafowls in the game are very stylized. I've seen peafowls in real life many times, and they don't quite have an ir as iridescent of a green on their tail feathers. And if that could be potentially brought down and like replaced with their realistic display, I think the Indian peafowl could really turn into a brilliant animal for the game. This one's not necessarily a rework, more of a variant discussion. The doll comes in many forms. In this case, we picked the more common tropical doll that you will see. But dolls are also present in many temperate forests as well. And getting the dolls that have much fluffier fur and a whiter underbelly would certainly go a long way to recreating realistic enclosures for the dolls as these are actually the dolls that you'll see more often in captivity rather than the simply orange dolls that many would be used to if they observed them in the wild. But these dolls would be a great variant nonetheless with much thicker fur and these white underbellies. This is an animal that I would also like to see have a bit more detail put into it nowadays. When it when when you put the gharial next to the other crocodilians that we've gotten, the detail is quite different. There is not as de much definition on the osteoderms and scoots as there are on the say the American alligator or the spectacle caiman. Gharials, I think, should be also given a much thinner jaw, as their jaws are not really too thick. Like the males may look like They've got a pretty thick jaw, but they do have a bit of a longer snout, and it is a lot thinner, as the, it is adapted for hunting fish rather than larger animals. And potentially reworking their locomotion could also make them a bit more realistic. As for those who don't know, gharial are actually very clumsy on land, and really can't really they they can't hold themselves up like they do when they currently walk around in the game. Instead, they must slide their bellies along sandy banks to get into the water or out of it. So having that changed would be a nice change. It would be a nice change. However, I have seen gharials hold themselves up, but they certainly cannot do it for long. Our last rework is the that of the Bengal tiger, another animal that is somewhat tunified that I would like to see given a more realistic touch. But overall, I think it would the Bengal tiger isn't the worst cat in the game, but I think it could be done a bit better, as tigers deserve their due credit, as they are magnificent animals. A update feature that could be added is animals carrying their young on their backs. This is something I was expecting to see with the Eurasia Animal Pack, as when Frontier teased the Sloth Bear's inclusion, it was... It was said that it is a shaggy animal that carries its babies on its back. However, that did not come true in the game. And to be honest, the cubs that we currently have are probably too large to do it anyway. However, I would still like to see animals carrying their young in some ways, as many of these animals seen here, like pangolins, orangutans, tigers, and sloth bears, among various others, do carry their young on their backs. And in the pangolins' case, on their tails, and with big cats, their jaws. If this could be added, it would add a great level of realism to like mother and, and cub care. Well, 
mother and infant care, I should say. And I think it would be really cool to see this sort of behavior playing out in your exhibits. I think it would look really, really, re really realistic. But that is all for the Indian subcontinents. And let me know which of the animals have I, that I've suggested here would you like to see in a, in a pack? I know I've skipped over a couple of good ones like the Indian giant squirrel, as that would be a great species to see. But many of these animals are just ways of diversifying the roster of the Indian subcontinent rather than just having all the classics there. Get some diversity in the herbivores and in some of the predators too. But let me know, which of these animals would you put in your Indian subcontinent animal packs in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a like and subscribe if you would like to see more. As for now, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.